If you wanna make your outdoor space beautiful on a DIY budget, you're gonna to wanna to watch this video. Hey there, it's Christina from the DIYMommy.com. As you can see, it's not that warm or summery here yet. However, I'm already thinking about some DIY outdoor ideas. I know a lot of you are too, so that's why I wanted to share with you 10 of my most favorite outdoor themed DIY decor projects today. These are some of my absolute favorite ones I've done over the years. So after you watch this video, let me know which one is your favorite down in the comments below. Let's get started. To begin, find a plastic planter or a metal planter in about the size you want your finished planter boxes to be. So this one, I believe, was just from Home Depot. It's 14 inches in diameter. Next, you're going to take some one by sixes and cut them to make the side panels. So I'm making side panels that are 14 inches wide to fit my planter. And then I'm also making some that are 15 and a half inches wide so that they can fit perpendicular to the 14 inch wide pieces and cover the end of them so I'm just using a seven and a half inch miter saw I have to cut twice because my miter saw is so teeny tiny if you have a larger miter saw that would be a lot easier then I took some one by threes and I'm cutting these for uh, the corners of my planter box so you can cut four of these at about the height of your uh, plastic or your metal planter you bought so mine are 16 and a half inches long and then I'm taking one by twos cutting four of those at the same height so in my case 16 and a half Half inches long so here are the cuts that you're going to have to make so I cut 16 pieces that were 14 inches long of 1 by 6s I have six pieces of 1 by 6s that are 15 and a half inches long and then I have the 1 by 3s and the 1 by 2s I will leave all of this down in the description box below so you can check out the cut list for yourself then I put three of the uh, 15 and a half inch pieces of one by sixes together like this and I took the one by three and I put it on one of the sides making sure to overlap it about three quarters of an inch on the end. This is going to um, cover my other perpendicular pieces and then I took a finishing nailer. You can use uh, just regular nails if you want as well and nailed that in place. I do love a finishing nailer to make this go a lot quicker and faster. And if your finishing nails happen to be a little bit longer than your two pieces of wood, you can just take some side cutters or some tin snips and cut off the backs of the uh, nails. Next, I took my 14 inch long pieces. I put three of them together of the one by sixes. And then I took the one by two piece of 16 and a half inch wood. And I also overlapped that about three quarters of an inch on one side, took my finishing nailer and nailed that piece in place then repeat with the second side just like this so put the one by two make sure it's hanging off of the side about three quarters of an inch and nail that in place with a finishing nailer or regular nails and a hammer you can also use wood glue to join your pieces together before you nail them that's completely up to you so here are my finished side panels. You can see the top ones are the longer ones, the bottom ones are the shorter ones. Then you're just gonna nail all these pieces together overlapping the ends just like I'm doing here. So I'm making sure that the pieces with the one by twos are perpendicular to the pieces with the one by threes and then just nailing them together with a finishing nailer. Again, you can put some wood glue in the joins and then nail, this is completely up to you. So it's a really, really simple project. I'm making this planter as easy as possible and it's basically just a sleeve for you to put your other planter inside like I'm doing here. So I didn't put a bottom or anything. You could put a bottom if you wanted to actually make this into a planter that you put, you know, plastic and dirt in, but I basically just wanted it to hide the planters that I already got. So this is just a super easy, super quick project. So at this point, you can stain, you can paint, you can do whatever you want to finish your planter boxes. So while I do the, like the natural wood look, I'm going to use these for a project with tons of color. Uh, here is the side cutters you could use to trim off any of the excess nails that are showing if you need to. I decided that I'm going to paint these with a white paint. So if you are painting your planter block boxes, just make sure to use an outdoor paint. I'm using just some white outdoor paint I had on hand and a regular paintbrush and painting two coats of paint on my planter boxes. 
I'm using this for a project that is actually not my home. It's another project and I'll share that with you soon. It's going to be really exciting and cute. And this project has a ton of color. So I wanted these just to be nice and bright and white so they would really pop against the colorful spot that I am putting them in. So once I finished painting these with two coats of paint, they were all done. And that's how easy it is to make these planter boxes. Again, check out the description box down below. Just click on that arrow down below the title to open that up and I'll make sure to leave the cut list for this project as well as the description on how to build them just in case you want to see the written instructions. For this one grab a terracotta pot from Dollar Tree as well as these wood beads. Then take some strong glue and a hot glue gun and glue the beads to the bottom of the pot. I put four beads around the perimeter of this pot. You could also use three. It is totally up to you. I wish these beads were a little larger for this project, but it turned out pretty cute with these smaller scale wood beads. Once the beads are dry, you can get on to the next part of the project. So I'm just using some scrap paint that I have, a variety of latex paints and chalk style paint, but you can use acrylic paint or whatever paint you have on hand. Use a round stencil brush and start putting a rainbow pattern on the pot. I wanted this to look really rustic and handmade, so I didn't worry about any brush strokes. I actually wanted the brush stro strokes on this rainbow pattern. I used a dark peach color, a light blush pink color, and then I finished off the final rainbow stripe with kind of a grayish white color. And here is the pot all finished, a super cute and simple DIY. I like putting a little plant in it. It would also look amazing with a real plant in there as well. And it's such a cute little footed pot that you could use anywhere in your home this season. For this DIY, you're going to need a pillow form. This one is from Ikea. It's my favorite pillow form. It's their 20 by 20 inch down filled pillow form. You'll need this Fabri-Tac Premium Fabric Glue from Beacon Adhesives. You can find it on Amazon, Walmart, or Michaels, and I will link to it down in the description box below. You'll also need a pair of scissors, a couple of cloth napkins. These were from Simons Canada last year, but I'll link to some other options down in the description box below. This is a great way to upcycle napkins you're not using anymore. And finally, you're going to need some large paper clips. First things first, take your scissors and cut off any tags off of your napkins. You're also going to want to wash your napkins before you use them just to make sure that if they shrink, they'll shrink before you make the pillow. There's a couple ways that you could make these. You can place the napkins right sides together and that's going to create a very simple seam that looks just like this. But for this tutorial, I'm wanting to do something a little bit different. I'm going to adhere my napkins wrong sides together to create a little bit of a seam detail on all of the edges. So place one napkin right side down, take your Fabri-Tac glue and put a small strip of glue all along one of the seams on the back, just like this. If you're using patterned napkins, just make sure that your patterns are facing the similar way, the same way before you adhere the napkins together. Then match up the corners of the napkins and start pushing the seams together, just like I'm doing here. If one napkin is slightly longer than the other one, you can pucker one napkin slightly and stretch the other one to make sure that the seams line up. A little bit of puckering is going to be just fine. Once you have one of the seams glued together, you can apply some adhesive to a second seam, just like this. And then take the other side of your napkin and adhere these together. So this fabric tack does remain tacky for a few minutes. You're going to be able to move your seams around a little bit before they stick together. Once the second side of your napkins are glued together, you can go ahead and do the same thing to a third side. Take the glue and put a little strip along the back of the seam. Then take the second napkin, align up the corners and adhere them together by pushing them together with your thumb and finger. Again, just stretch one of the napkins slightly if you need to do that and line up everything nicely together. Just make sure before you do this that your napkins are quite similar in size. If there's a lot of variance between the napkin sizes, you're gonna have a bit of a problem adhering them together. 
So leave this to dry for at least an hour. I found that was definitely enough time to make sure that the glue was dried well enough. And then take your pillow insert and roll it tightly or fold it in half just like I'm doing here. And stuff it inside the pillow cover that you've created. Make sure to line up the corners of the pillow form with the pillow cover and squish that pillow form really far down into the pillow cover so you're left with lots of fabric to work on this final edge. Finally, you're gonna take the fabric tack one more time. You can see my corners came off a little bit because I was being a little bit aggressive with that pillow form, but no problem. You can just put some more fabric tack on the corners if that happens to you as well. And then take one of the large paper clips and hold the fabric together with the paper clip. Repeat on the other corner, adding fabric tack as needed to make the corner nice and secure. Take a paper clip and clip the fabric together. Now you're going to start from the center of this final edge. So make sure that you've lined up center to center from one napkin to the next. Apply some fabric tack glue right in that center, about an inch of it. Push the two napkins together and secure with a large paper clip. The reason I'm not using stick pins here is I don't want them to get gluey or stuck into the seams. I found that paper clips worked just fine. Now working with one of the sides of the pillow cover, take some more glue, put a little strip of, of it on one seam of the napkin, and then you can push the seams together with your finger and your thumb and then secure them with the paper clips. You can secure them about every inch or so just to make sure that your seam is going to stay in place as your pillow dries. Then all you have to do is just repeat the same thing with the second side, a strip of the fabric glue, pulling and puckering the seam slightly as needed to make sure that they line up, and then securing with a paper clip as that seam dries. So once you're finished doing this final edge, you can let your pillow dry for at least an hour. Overnight is better to make sure it is nice and strong. And then once the pillow is all dry, you can remove the paper clips and that is it. That's how easy it is to make this no sew pillow. I even washed mine and it went through the wash perfectly. You would just have to wash the pillow form and the pillow case together. Again, if you want to make a removable pillow cover, I will leave some links to those in the description box below, but I love this for a quick and easy update for your home for spring. No sew, so easy and so fun to make. To make these DIY outdoor chairs, I followed Anna White's modern outdoor chair from 2x4s and 2x6s plan. I will link to that down in the description box below and I found it very easy to follow along. I purchased inexpensive spruce lumber from the Home Depot and the total cost in wood was only around $50. So these chairs are really modern and beautiful looking and they're also very inexpensive. I did alter the plan to fit some outdoor chair cushions I found at my local grocery store that were only 22 inches wide, so I did make the seat of the chair a couple inches narrower, which is, was a really easy thing to change. Since the building plan only uses 2x4s, 2x6s, and some deck screws, it's a great project if you're new to woodworking. I used my miter saw to cut all of the pieces, and I used a drill to drill in the screws. These chairs have beautiful modern lines and they would look great stained, however I decided to paint them white. I painted them with white exterior latex paint and I finished them off with an inexpensive chair cushion, an outdoor throw pillow in a happy yellow stripe, and a blanket with lots of texture. I especially love how the sides of these DIY chairs look. The rows of 2x6s is so modern but it has that little bit of a farmhouse twist. The next project I want to show you is a garden sign. I'm using Rust-Oleum chalked paint. This is a chalk style paint, and I'm just painting this sign that I found from Dollar Tree. Yeah, this one was Dollar Tree. I just used one coat of paint on this because it has really great coverage. Then I printed out this on my computer. I just used Word, and on the back side, I'm just scribbling a whole bunch of pencil on it. This is a really inexpensive and quick way to transfer words onto a piece of wood. 
Then I just turned this on top of the uh, sign and I just made sure it was all centered. And then I went ahead and traced the outline of the words with a pencil. You could also use a pen for this as long as it's nice and sharp and gets the uh, pencil transferred to the wood sign. So I'm just using the word garden. I know it's not very creative. You, you could come up with something more creative, perhaps garden sweet garden or welcome to my garden, anything like that. After I traced the words, I took a Sharpie and I traced the outline. I just like the Sharpie tracing the outline of my words because it makes them look nice and crisp. I have a hard time getting that nice crisp outline of words with a paintbrush and paint, so I like to do, start with a Sharpie first. Then after I outlined the words with Sharpie, I'm just taking some, again, leftover latex paint in a kind of a charcoal color, and I'm filling in the letters on my sign. So you could use whatever color of paint you want, just make sure your Sharpie matches the paint if you like that matched effect. Then after I painted the whole thing, I let it dry and I'm painting the edges of the sign as well. I'm kind of wanting to match that enamelware look of that first light feature I made with the black and white, so I'm going ahead and painting along the sides of the sign. After everything is dry, I'm just taking a sanding sponge and sanding over the letters and the edges because I really truly love that worn vintage look. If you don't like the worn vintage look, then just don't sand the sign. And here's how this cute garden sign turned out. I just took a screw and my drill and I screwed it to a scrap piece of tree branch. So I got this hoop from Michaels, these little rings from the dollar store and I'm just using some old linen dripping it up into two inch strips and using a couple of my favorite mosquito repelling essential oils, lavender and citronella and sprinkling them all over the fabric. Next, I'm tying the strips of fabric with a lark's head knot onto this big gold hoop from Michaels. I'm arranging them all the way around the hoop and then I found these sort of drapey faux plants from Michaels as well and I'm just tying them around the hoop as well and keeping them secure with some floral wire. Now I'm using some macrame cord and tying that to four points on the ring, adding that little dollar store ring on top and now my little mosquito repellent chandelier is ready to hang. I think this looks super cute. When the wind blows it, it blows around those essential oils. I did add a couple extra strips of lace on it as well because when I hung it up I thought it needed a little bit of extra fabric. I found this concrete planter at HomeSense. It was only $17. You can make your own concrete bowl. I've seen other people do it. I will leave a link to do that down in the description box below. I'm filling it about halfway with sand and I found this gel fuel from Amazon. I will also link that below and I'm going to be placing that inside. I'm grabbing some chicken wire and cutting it into a circle that's just big enough to fit in the top of this planter and pushing that inside. Now I have these fire safe rocks. I found these on Amazon too and I'm adding them to the top of this little mini fire bowl. And then you can light that gel fuel and it's such a cool way to not only repel mosquitoes but give your patio such a fantastic cozy feeling at night. You might have seen this already on the porch makeover I did for Brookfield Residential. This one also starts with the grapevine base, however this base is an oval shape. I found these lemon stems at Michaels which are actually on sale right now on clearance and these ferns I believe were from Michaels as well last year. I just had them on hand uh, for a couple years. I took some glue gun glue and I put it on the back of the ferns and then I put them on my wreath like this, kind of on an angle on the right hand side. And then after I did that, I kind of fluffed up my lemon stems and I put some hot glue on the base of those as well and arranged them in the center of the ferns like this. 
I like to only use a little bit of hot glue because then what I can do is take all of the decorations off and redo my wreath seasonally if I want to. It's a great way to save money. So I put the second stem down like this of the lemon and then finally I took some black and white striped ribbon. I found this one off of Etsy. I made it into a bow and then I took my hot glue and I put a dab of hot glue on the back of this bow and I attached it to the center of my wreath. I really love the black and white and lemon combination of this wreath and the ferns and the lemons make it feel very, very summery. As a finishing touch, I folded the bottom of my bow in half vertically and then I took my scissors, cut that at an, at an angle and that gives the finished bow a nice look. And here's how it looks on the yellow door of the porch that I did a little makeover on. I will leave that makeover down in the description box below for you and somewhere up in the right hand corner. Let me show you how to make fabric twine out of leftover fabric. This has so many uses. So what you do is cut some leftover fabric into one inch strips. What I do is cut a slit with my scissors at about an inch and then I rip the rest. I'm just using 100% cotton fabric. It's all pre-washed from my baby DIY making days. Then you take two strips of fabric and you tie them into an overhead knot just like I'm doing here. And then what you're going to do is twist each strip individually and then twist the two strips together. So I'm using my index finger to twist the strip around it just like this. And then I pull the strip behind the other one to create the larger twist. So twist an individual strip, pull it behind the other strip and continue in this way. My daughter's also made these and she just liked twisting with her thumb and her index finger, but I liked twisting around with my index finger like I'm doing here. There's lots of different methods to do this as long as you twist each individual strand and then twist them together. This is one of those things that you can do when you're watching Netflix, when you're watching a movie, it's quite relaxing. I find it very therapeutic. When you run out of fabric on one of the strips, you just take another strip of fabric and you roll it into a roll just like I'm doing here. Put it inside the first piece and then roll that over the new piece. And then you can just twist it so that it stays firmly in place. Make sure you hold on to that join and then you continue twisting the individual strands and then twisting them together to create your fabric twine. So what you want to do here is you want to take different colors of fabric and just layer them and keep them all different to create a really boho happy kind of looking twine like I have here. You could also stick with just two different colors of fabrics to create a different look. It's completely up to you. So you can make all sorts of things like coasters, you can make rugs. I will link to some ideas down in the description box below. What I decided to do with this fabric twine is make a cute little planter. I took this planter that I found at Dollar Tree a couple months ago. It's just a plain white ceramic planter. However, you could use all sorts of different things. You could even use plastic containers that you've upcycled. And then I'm taking a glue gun, putting a strip of hot glue onto the planter, and then tacking down the DIY fabric scrap twine. And you can just go ahead and coil the twine around the planter just using strips of glue to adhere it. Make sure that the layers are next to each other so you don't see any of the planter or the container in between the rows of your fabric twine. When you near the end, you can just take that final knot and tuck it underneath the previous rows just like this. This is such a simple DIY and I loved making this fabric twine. So therapeutic, so boho chic, would look very cute in a kid's room or as a happy accessory this spring. Here I have it styled in my work studio. Now we're going to create a caddy design. I'm using this Bring on the Sun artwork from Cricut, just using my Cricut Design Space app right on my phone to send it to my Explore 3. Thank you. 
Once these designs are weeded, I'm placing transfer tape on top of each one and smoothing out that transfer tape on the front and the back. I'm prepping my caddy, removing the backing from the transfer tape design and placing it on the center front of the caddy. So I think this caddy is perfect for holding your cutlery for outdoor dining. So you can place some napkins in some of the compartments of the caddy and then in the rest of them you can place all of your cutlery for your picnic or your outdoor gathering. I think another great use for this one is to use it for a little poolside caddy or a beach caddy. Place things like water bottles, sunscreen, bubbles, goggles, sunglasses, and things that you might need for the pool or the beach. Thank you so much for watching this video today. I hope you enjoyed it. I have two more videos with 20 more DIY outdoor ideas on them. So make sure to watch those next if you want more inspiration right up here.